You are listening to the Boss Experience Podcast, a podcast with conversations about business growth, self-development, and maintaining a mindset to achieve business success. My name is Michelle Davis, and I am a business strategist and coach, and I am your host. Let's get started. Welcome to another episode of the Boss Experience, the podcast that helps you turn your expertise into an online coaching business that replaces your nine to five income. My name is Michelle Davis and I'm your host. And I am super excited about today's topic, which is five things to do when you're starting your coaching business. Are you trying to turn your expertise into an online coaching business that replaces your nine to five income? If so, tell me if this sounds familiar. You took a coaching certification class, but still don't know how to develop a coaching business or get clients. You bought a course only to never implement what you learn or worse, you still don't know where to start. Or maybe you're struggling to piece together a bunch of free information you find online, hoping and praying for results only to still be confused. The key to earning revenue in your online coaching business is having a process to get the right people contacting you about enrolling in your programs and services. You also need a coaching offer that gets results for your clients in addition to you being able to charge a premium price for your services. So if you need help putting these pieces together, my name is Michelle Davis And I am the host of the Boss Experience Podcast, in addition to being a phenomenal business coach. And I created a free short video explaining where to begin when it comes to starting an online coaching business that replaces your nine to five income. Just go to CEOBlueprintAcademy.com to get instant access now. That's CEOBlueprintAcademy.com. Okay, back to the show. Okay, the first thing you want to do when you're developing a coaching business is to think about what are your your passion, skills, and expertise? Because you don't want to think about, you know, the fact that you want to be a life coach or you want to be a health coach without first assessing what your skills are and how can you best solve a problem and how can you best help someone make a transformation. Once you know what your what your passion is and, and your skills and your expertise, then you want to think about What's the best coaching program I can develop to best serve the people that I plan to serve? When you think about, like, I want to be a life coach first, before you actually go through that entire process, you kind of get lost into wanting to make the impact. And, And really and truly, there may be other, you know, strengths that you have that you want to capitalize on and be able to help your clients in a way that's beneficial to solving their problem and helping them achieve their transformation. The second big mistake you want to avoid is to discount the skills and expertise you have. So I talk to a lot of people that think they don't possess a skill because maybe they've worked, you know, as an administrative assistant or they feel like they don't have these amazing qualities or skills or expertise. The reality is, is that we all have passion. We all have skills and we all have expertise. We just have to tap into what that is. So think about it. You've worked a nine to five for how many years? How many years have you worked at nine to five? And so your employers over the years, whether you've had one or many, have profited from your skills and expertise over all of that time. Of course, you have skills and expertise. You just have to figure out what your skills and expertise is and whom you're best equipped to serve in terms of helping them solve a problem and helping them make a transformation. So don't discount your skills and expertise because everyone has them. You just have to discover what yours are. So the third thing you want to avoid is not establishing systems early on in your business. When I say systems, people immediately think, oh, well, I have to hire someone or I have to. No, you don't. You want to wait until you're profitable in your business before you take on the responsibility of hiring someone. But you do want to 
take the time as you're developing your business and as you're growing your business to get to know your business, get to know how you operate, get to know your best practices for acquiring customers or your legion or acquiring your clients. You want to know best practices for your marketing. You want to know best practices, you know, for you know, your sales. How are you handling sales? You want to know best practices for what tools you plan to use. Because once you establish what your best practices are and how to best deliver your service, you can then teach someone else when you're ready, when your business has enough revenue to replicate your results. So number four, the fourth thing you want to avoid is not documenting what works in your business. So remember when I said you want to dial in your systems so you can teach others how to replicate your systems? Another important thing is you want to document what your systems are. Because if you don't document what you're tracking, what you're measuring, whether it's in your marketing, you know, what works with your sales process, what didn't work, and you you need to have standard operating procedures. And I know a lot of coaches say, well, don't worry about that. You don't need to worry about that as a solopreneur. And that is not exactly true because having come from just prior to launching a coaching business, I have 16 years in management and I know what it takes to manage an operation. And so when you are launching a business, I'm not talking about a side hustle, but when you're launching a business, you need to think of yourself and your company and your business as an operation that needs to run smoothly. When I hear coaches say that, I say clearly they've never managed anything prior to launching their own business because they're delivering information based on their own experience. Just as I'm going to deliver information based on my experience, which is you need written standard operating procedures. And with those written standard operating procedures, you can establish what works in your business. You can also create a process for bringing on freelancers, create a process for revamping your business, creating your business plan, you know, creating foresight and vision about your business, and then also being able to scale in the future and having this foundation that your team can refer back to. If nothing's written down and everything's all in your head, you're just going to create a bunch of chaos and you're going to create a team that has no clue what to do in your business. They have no clue how to replicate your results. And so right from the start, as you're starting your business, you want to document what's working and what isn't so you can build systems in your business that make sense to you, that make sense for your business, and that help you have the profitable business that you desire so you're not working for the rest of your life as a solopreneur. So my fifth and final tip is create an offer and not a product or service. And what I mean by creating an offer is you want to think about where are your clients at right now? What is their biggest problem? What are their pain points? And you want to think about where they want to be. What is their happy place? And so as a coach, you may think instinctively, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to have a one-on-one session and and I'm going to deliver this magical transformation for people or I'm going to solve their problem. And the truth is you you can't solve a problem in any significant and scalable way in one session. So you may be able to resolve like a, you know, put out a fire, help them like with technical assistance in one session, but you can't really help someone make a transformation in one session. So you want to think about the people that you want to serve. Where are they at right now in terms of their pain points and what is their happy place and how you can structure a series of topics to get them from where they're at, their pain points to their happy place and Price it as a package, you know, so this is what you offer. But think about in terms of like the content, how are you going to structure it? And so you want to have a plan for that. When you're juggling work, family, and your own business aspirations, the last thing you want to worry about is what's for dinner every single night. Then when you add on the endless supermarket trips, hours spent in the kitchen, and the money wasted on takeout, it can really take a toll on your precious time and budget. And let's not forget about those picky little eaters in our household that never seem satisfied. But fear not. I recently discovered Cook Unity, and it's been a total lifesaver. Cook Unity delivers restaurant quality meals prepared by local chefs right to your doorstep. 
And guess what? You get to choose the delivery schedule that works best for you, so no more stressing about meal planning or cooking every night. With Cook Unity, all you have to do is heat and serve. It's that simple. And the best part? You can customize your meals to fit your dietary preferences. Whether you're into high protein, carb friendly, keto, paleo, or any other diet. Just a click of a button on your computer or phone, and voila. Oh, and did I mention that the meals from Cook Unity are priced the same as your average grocery bill? It's an absolute steal. And the best part? Even my picky kids love the selection and taste of the food. So it's a win win for the whole family. So here's the deal. If you're ready to reclaim your time and simplify your weeknight dinners, give Cook Unity a try. And as a special offer for Michelle's The Boss Experience podcast listeners, you get $50 off your first order. Just visit thebossexperiencepodcast.com forward slash cookunity to claim your discount now. Trust me, you won't regret it. That's thebossexperiencepodcast.com forward slash cookunity to get your $50 off now. Now back to the episode. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Boss Experience Podcast. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. And if you're interested in learning how to turn your expertise into an online coaching business that replaces your nine to five, visit ceoblueprintacademy.com. That's ceoblueprintacademy.com. And once again, thanks for tuning in. And I hope you'll tune in to a future episode of the Boss Experience Podcast. That's a wrap. Be well and take care. Thank you for tuning in to the Boss Experience Podcast. Don't forget to leave a review for this episode and tune in next time.